and we'll we'll try since we're both doing it we'll we'll try to be br- quick yeah well my my mine will be brief for shout um, so just give me a countdown and we'll we'll go gotcha all right five four what is up for realists Surprisingly, we have had a lot going on in the movie industry this week. Um, but before we get into that, uh, what's going on with you, Ty? How you been? Been good. Uh, like you said, just surprised that we kind of have a lot to talk about today on top of another uh, fun-filled getting real that you will be uh, participating with me this time. So that excites me. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah. Uh, last week we talked game changing things. Now we're there's a couple game changing things still in there, but not nothing on that level. But still excited to be coming. Absolutely. All right. Well, to get us off, we know we got our real news. The real news coming to you, Tyler. You got the first story. Come, bring it in. Bring it in, Tyler. Bring it in. Bring it in, good sir. So the thriller run which is director Anish Chiganti's follow-up to his 2018 thriller Searching, uh, was originally scheduled to open Mother's Day of this year, will instead debut on Hulu. Uh, release date TBD. But this also actually isn't the only Lionsgate film to back off of a theatrical release. Uh, Janelle Monet's thriller Antebellum will debut on PVOD on September 18th. Greg, we keep seeing these uh, these pieces fall. We keep seeing these theaters backing away from theatrical. Uh, what are your thoughts? I, I think that it's a very smart thing to do, um, especially going, especially in the times that we're at. And, and we talked about this last week. We said that, that one studio is going to change the game. We saw the big change last week and everybody's, kind of looking to see if they could get a piece of that PVOD pie. Um, I, 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 would, I was hoping to see Annabelle on the big screen, but it makes sense. It makes sense that, that, you, that you have a product like this and that you want to get your returns as quickly as possible. You don't want it sitting on the shelf because as it sits on the shelf, it's going to accrue debt, right? You don't, want, you don't want that to happen, right? You, you've already put out the, the marketing tools out there. You don't want to lose... The, the attraction for it. And if you put back in more marketing dollars, like Tyler explained a couple weeks ago, you're going to lose a lot of the, the viewership to begin with. You can't, you can't make a film and then furthermore market the film and then not release the film. You're going to lose a lot of, of, of eyeballs that way. So it, it's something that we've been, we've been talking about a lot and it's something that we're seeing moving into motion right now, especially with the, uh, what seems to be a lack of change in the social climate at the moment. So uh, next up, we have uh, some big news uh, talking about one of the biggest directors in Hollywood, Martin Scorsese, has signed a first look multi-year deal for film and TV projects with who else other than Apple TV Plus who will be releasing his next movie, Killers of the Flower Moon. That project left Paramount with budget disputes, similar to what happened with The Irishman. This time he's going Apple TV Plus instead of Netflix, and Apple TV Plus will be backing this project uh, with uh, $200 plus million dollars for the budget uh, for this and will also allow him the creative freedom and support on any of his upcoming projects. Tyler, what does this mean? I, I mean, Martin was one of those who was an advocate for big screen as well, correct? Correct. Yeah. And I, I think he's, to, to use a phrase that we use a lot on this show, he's seeing the writing on the wall and he has a lot of these ambitious projects that studios don't want to pony up the money for. 
So he's going to the people who will because he likes making movies and he wants to keep making them and providing that form of entertainment for people. So I, I, this is clearly a business move for him. And Apple TV is looking to throw their hat in the ring. They've had a couple of successes with some of the movies that they've acquired already and put out. But this, this could be the move that really puts them on the map and keeps them viable and competitive in the streaming market. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. The dude, now, I, we, keep on, we keep on coming back to this question. Do you think that this move could possibly influence some of the other advocates for theater viewing, need I say his name, James Cameron, <laughs> to do certain deals like this in the future? I, I think that there are certain people who like Mr. Cameron and Mr. Nolan who will avoid going to streaming for their projects as long as they can. They will always make movies that they feel need to be seen on the big screen. We'll shoot them that way. We'll go to the studios that way and we'll do everything that they can to make sure that they are released that way. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. What's our next story up? So next up, uh, for all of you clamoring for this, My Spy 2 is in development at Amazon and STX. Yay! <laughs> Look, I, I saw the movie. I, I think Batista and his relationship with the girl, along with uh, their co-star Kristen Schaal, they're very funny together, and those were the most enjoyable parts of the movie but it's it's surprising well actually no it's not surprising to me that this movie was a big hit on amazon because what do families want right now entertainment so they probably flocked to this movie as good entertainment for their kids so i'm i'm not surprised I'll, i'm curious what they're going to do with it or go now i feel like they probably wore the concept out but who knows? Sounds good. Tyler, go ahead and take the next one. You know what? I feel like the next one, the next one kind of feels like feels like something that you're gonna put justice to. <laughs> uh again, another project announced. Uh the long rumored sequel to 2010's Tron Legacy. It's apparently still happening. And it's going to star Jared Leto and be directed by Garth Davis, who directed Lion and Mary Magdalene, with the mysterious title Tron Ares that we only know about because Leto spoiled it on his social media. <laughs> so I, I don't know if I'm excited for this or not. When Tron Legacy came out, I was not a fan of it. Mm. I thought it was very, very empty entertainment. And I actually rewatched it this year in quarantine. It's not as bad as I remembered it. And I kind of ended up enjoying it. The, I, I kind of wish that it would take off more with that story and those characters, especially there's a character played by Killian Murphy who's only in like the first five minutes of the movie that I would love to see come back. And he still might. We don't know. Nothing else has been announced other than its title. But, you know, I, 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 I don't think we need to be throwing Jared Leto more projects. I really don't no. think we do. Yeah, he's a talented guy, but I don't know. The, 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 the movies that he's in just don't excite me. Yeah. They really think don't. I think I think I won't want to take food out of my mind's mouth. Like you know, like let him get his projects. But at the same time, like I think what needs to happen is that his administration, the people that are doing the work in the background for him, need to find stuff that's gonna fuel him differently. Uh, we all know about the great disaster of Suicide Squad and his Joker character, and you know he's he's a he seems or at least appears to be a difficult person to work with doesn't mean that he hasn't put out good work. Uh, but similarly, 
the the hype around him has cooled off quite a bit, and this project isn't steaming up anything anytime soon. Um, speaking of actors, <laughs> you know, speaking of uh, about projects, um, it has been announced that Dwayne The Rock Johnson is the highest paid actor for the second year in a row, raking in $87.5 million at the top of the list. Next up, the next person on the list, is the second highest paid actor is Ryan Reynolds. You have Mark Wahlberg, Ben Affleck, Vin Diesel, Akshay Kumar, Lin-Manuel Miranda, which I love this dude now. I think I've become a, 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 a what do you call it? A Hamilton, one of those guys. Like all, like I've been using quotes from the movie and everything. It's crazy. Um, Will Smith, my guy, uh, Adam Sandler, and Jackie Chan, all on the top ten list. Lowest paying actor on this list is coming in at forty million dollars. I'm I'm happy for Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I think that a lot of people were skeptical with his acting career when he when he first started, and he seems to he's an animal as as a worker, first and foremost, has serious work ethic. So it's not a surprise that his success is coming the way that it is, but it's even more impressive that, you know, he is not, he doesn't originate from the acting field, but he has come across and he's done almost every type of project that you could think about, mostly focus on the blockbusters right now. Um, but I think the saddest part for me is that there aren't more women on this list. I yeah. think that's that's the only thing that that I'm looking at this list and I'm um, um, I'm really disheartened by is that I I would love to see a Scarlett Johansson on, on that list somewhere. You know, I, I love to see um, uh, Aquafina on that list somewhere. I like to see you know uh, there are a bunch of female actors that that should be on this list that we don't see on this list. Um, and it might it might be one out of it might be a couple things. It might be the administration that the, that is working for them is not getting them the types of deals that they need to be getting. Um, what's her name? I oh, oh Tyler, help me out. Um, I'm trying to figure. I'm trying give me, to give me the movie. Um, the the female John Wick. Um, she was in Bombshell. She was in Margot Robbie. No. Um, why can't I remember Curly her name? Stern. Thank you. There is Theron. She should be on this list. Oh, absolutely. That woman works, she works harder than anybody in this business and has been on multiple projects and still can't break into this list. That's something that I, I wish I could see a little bit more of when it comes to this. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I mean, admittedly, with the lack of women, I am happy that it is a pretty diverse list. It's not just all white guys, you know, True. ruling the list. There, there is some diversity there, but mm -hmm. you're right. Charlie Theron should be here. Natalie Portman should be there. Mm -hmm. Scarlett Johansson should be there. Florence Pugh should be there. You know, like there, there are lots and lots of quality female actresses who put in the hard work. Margot Robbie, I can't remember if I said her or not. There, there's a lot of people who should be on this list that mm -hmm. are not. I can't remember. I can't believe that it took me so long to remember Charlie Theron's name. Like, me too. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty disappointed in myself right now. <laughs> me too. Me too. But like, but the the thing about it is that like, you know, even though I couldn't, even though I couldn't remember her name in the moment, like, I, like her face is implanted into my mind because of all the work that she's done in this business and how hard of a worker she is. So that's that's my only takeaway. That's my that's my down takeaway. But I'm really happy for Dwayne The Rock Johnson on this one. So our last piece of news, uh, although last week we both believed that this was going to go to Disney Plus, New Mutants is still scheduled to be released in theaters on August 28th, including IMAX, with tickets going on sale next week. Is this going to change? And if it doesn't, are drive-ins about to be ready to make a killing? Mm-hmm. I have my own theories about this. I honestly think that if it does just get released and end up in drive-ins, I think this is just Disney's way of saying we released it to get it off their books. I think they're tired of holding on to this. Yeah. But that that's just me. 
it's costing them too much money. It's costing them too much money to hold on to. Now, it, it initially didn't. They inherited this movie from Fox. Um, and, you know, especially with the, with the way that they're handling the brand changeover off of all the acquisitions, including bringing back Touchstone, which is pretty exciting. Um, I think that for the most part, it's just to kind of like get this, get this one out the way. It's not their baby. It's not Mulan, but it's, it's not their cash cow. They're not, they're not looking to make $500 million off of this film at all. Um, they're, they're more looking to, to just get, get it out there. The, the projects that aren't, that aren't going to make them that kind of money, they're probably just going to toss that out and, and kind of have that be talked about for whatever. Really, they're they're going to receive pocket change from this film. So uh, will, it, will it work out? I don't know. We'll see how it goes. This this one this this the most exciting thing. This is feels like a sweep under the rug. But the most exciting thing about Disney, and they have like guys. Let me tell you something. I've I've been doing a little research as to all the the franchises, the products that Fox has attained throughout the years. And I realized that there were there were some Marvel ca uh, characters in the mix of that as well. We'll get into that a little bit later Tyler probably not this episode we'll go for the, another episode and talk about it but um, that acquisition Disney is going to make mad money they spent what 71 billion dollars on Fox something like that right they, they're going to they're going to make a killing off of some of the franchise especially the kids products guys so last week Tyler so graciously honored me with kudos for calling it on disney i'm gonna try and call it again in the next 12 years the the revitalized franchises that disney's gonna bring forward off of the fox plate is gonna make them 10x what they just bought fox for last year and it's ridiculous stuff that you wouldn't even think about i look forward to seeing if that comes true greg yeah you're looking you're gonna have me in suspense for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it won't. It won't take twelve years for us to start seeing the signs. But it'll definitely take 12, 12 years or so for it to start developing and start doing something that we're gonna be. We're gonna look back on it in the next twelve years, and we're gonna be like, "Wow, that was the strategic move." And I'm kind of wondering what they're gonna buy next. So I, that's that's the exciting thing for me on my on my Disney watch. You know, I'm. I'm Looking at looking at what Disney's moves are strategically to make their company even more dominant than what they are right now. 